I wanted to show a quick example of a headwind tailwind problem because um, it just might have been a while since you've done these. Um, so here's the problem. Uh, flying, I'm flying a plane from Albuquerque to Santa Fe and the distance is 60 miles and uh, on the way there I go there and I go back so let's see Santa Fe and back Oops. on the way there the distance is 60 miles and it takes 18 minutes uh, going and it takes 22 and a half minutes coming back so why would it take sh longer coming back? Well, it's because there's a tailwind going and a headwind coming back. Let's assume that it's the same wind speed both times and that my airspeed it is constant. So in fact, I'm not actually landing at Albuquerque and Santa Fe. I guess what I'm doing is I'm taking a little joyride from the air over Albuquerque to the air over Santa Fe and then just turning right around and coming back, which is quite plausible. It's just I'm not actually going to land in Santa Fe and sample the fine tourist delights there. Um, so what we'd like to know is what is my airspeed and what is the wind speed? Oh, and let's assume that it's um, a, an issue so that we don't have to bring vectors into this is that we're going to assume that it's a dead ahead headwind going and a straight behind tailwind coming back. And otherwise we'd have to bring in vectors and then it would be a more complicated problem. So what's my airspeed? What is the wind speed? So when we say airspeed, remember the way you measure, if you're flying in a plane and you look at the speed indicator, that's the airspeed, that's the speed relative to the air you're, you're flying in. In other words, it's relative to the air that's moving and which constitutes the wind. And so um, there's three quantities that are interesting. There's the airspeed, the wind speed, and then there's the ground speed. That's going to be um, it influenced by the airspeed and the wind speed. So there's two cases. If it's a headwind, I would say head wing for some reason. So airspeed, let's have some variables here. Airspeed, let's call that V for velocity. That's a nice term. The wind speed, let's call it W, since it's the next letter in the alphabet, and it conveniently W start wind starts with W. The ground speed, that's going to be if it's a headwind you measure your speed relative to the air, but the air is moving back relative to the ground, so you have to subtract off. You're hurt by the wind. And if it's a tailwind, then it's V plus W. You're moving at V relative to the air, but the air is moving along. It's like sort of walking forward on a train and figuring out how fast you're going relative to the ground. You actually add both of those speeds together. OK, so can we figure that out? Well. Yes, we can, because we can use distance equals rate times time applied to the ground speed. The key thing is that Albuquerque and Santa Fe aren't moving. They're on the ground. They aren't being blown around by the wind, presumably, unless it's a really strong wind. And, whoops, rate times time. And we can use distance equals rate times time applied to the ground speed for both cases. So what do we get? Let's put it in display mode. We get 60, that's the distance. That's going to be um, with the tailwind. We're going, it looks like we got a tailwind. Uh, oops, wait a minute. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Dead ahead headwind coming back. I got confused. The headwind is actually going to come back, and the straight behind tailwind is when we're going there. Because it takes less time to go, that's where we've got the, uh, the tailwind. Okay, so 60 is going to be uh, rate, which is, let's look at going there, that's V plus W, that's where I've got the tailwind, times 18 minutes. Now, I want everything in miles per hour, so 18 minutes, uh, let's see, let's just convert those guys. 
18 minutes equals, that's 3 uh, tenths of an hour. 3 tenths of an hour. OK, so that's going to be times 3 tenths. Oops. 3 tenths. All right. And then the same 60, the same travel, is V minus W. That, he, that speed going against the headwind times a, a bigger time, 22.5 minutes. Hmm, OK, let's go back up here. 22.5 minutes equals, well, let's see. That's 22.5 times, um, we need 1 hour over 60 minutes. Uh, let's put minutes. OK. And that turns out to be uh, 3 eighths when you simplify it out. So it turns out to be 3 eighths of an hour. So that's going to be 3 eighths. All right. So now let's go ahead and clear those fractions to get a better system. Actually, let me just do a new one. And so that's going to be 600. And I'm going to put everything on the left-hand side. So 3v, I'm going to put it in our standard form. 3v plus 3w is 600. That's the first equation. And 3v minus 3w is going to be uh, 240. No, 480. Thank you. OK. Now those are really easy to solve by elimination. You could do it by substitution because it's a 2 by 2 system. But let's just add them together. You get 6v equals 1080. And you get V equals 1080 over 6, which is equal to 180. And then solve for W, you just go back to either of the equations. Let's say um, 3V plus 3W equals 600. You know, I could have even simplified those guys just down to V plus W, to be honest. Let's do that right now. V plus W is just 200. And we know V, so 180 plus W equals 200. Of course, the principle here is that once you know one of the variables, the, the rest of the problem is pretty easy. So the airspeed is 180 miles per hour. It's pretty fast for like a private plane, but uh, or like a propeller plane, but totally uh, totally reasonable. And the wind speeds are rather moderate, 20 miles per hour. For winds aloft, that's actually uh, quite low. OK, so that's um, an example of doing one of these problems. 47 is quite, quite similar uh, to this kind of problem.